I'm going to walk you through building an EKS cluster in AWS, and we're going to go through the features and benefits of using Terraform Cloud to do that. Let's get started. Okay, so um, first thing you need to do is get a Terraform Cloud account. So go ahead and uh, sign up for a free account. And once you're in, you'll see here I have a, uh, my free account and I've got a bunch of workspaces and uh, projects. So first thing you want to do is um, create a project. I'm going to call this project N0 Demos, create. And in my project, I want to create a workspace. So let's create a workspace. And a workspace really is a construct to uh, bring together different resources that you want to build and destroy uh, together from a dependency perspective. And there are multiple workflows for a workspace. You have a version control workflow, CLI driven workflow, and API driven workflow. The most common one is the version control workflow, which mimics kind of a GitOps uh, workflow. So we're going to go with that. So you click that and I already have my version control system tied in here. So uh, if you didn't, you would, uh, you can connect your own uh, VCS here. So I already have GitHub. So I'm going to use GitHub. And um, actually, I already have that. So let's just go back and choose GitHub. And from here, I'm going to choose my uh, repository that I want to work with. Now, this repository uh, I already have, and it's uh, it's there. You can fork it, and you can tie it into your own um, Terraform cloud. Okay, so this is my uh, workspace name. I'm just going to keep it as the name of the repo. You can give it a description. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, with the advanced options, you can actually tell Terraform Cloud which is your working directory. I'm just using the root, so I'm going to leave that as is. Apply method, once, uh, whether you want it to auto-apply or manual apply, I'll leave it as manual apply. Um, if you're doing some sort of uh, automation, you might want to do auto-apply. But at that point, you wouldn't use the version control uh, driven workflow. You'd probably use a CLI or API driven workflow. Um, you can see VCS triggers always trigger runs. So whenever any changes happen to your repo, Terraform will automatically trigger. Uh, you can also tie it to a specific branch as well. Uh, pull requests, automatic speculative speculative plans will get triggered. Uh, so that's fine. We'll leave that as is. So really nothing here to change. We can go ahead and create our workspace. So that will take a couple of seconds. It will pull what it needs to pull. And... Uh, and there we go, no variables found. So we need to go ahead and configure our workspace to use some variables. So continue to workspace overview. On the left hand side, you're going to see a bunch of tabs overview here shows us, uh, you know, the overview, the uh, readme from the repo gets uh, imported here. Uh, any outputs, we don't have any outputs at the moment because we haven't run the uh, we haven't run Terraform yet. Here's the GitHub repo. Execution mode is remote. There are two modes. Actually, there are three modes. There's remote, local, and agent. Uh, agent is for a paid tier, and that allows you to run an agent in your own environment. Let's say in a vSphere environment on-prem allows the agent to talk to Terraform Cloud, and it's a way to get Terraform Cloud to provision your resources that are uh, internal or on-prem or in an AWS VPC that doesn't have access uh, inbound, so you don't have to open firewalls inbound into your environment. Uh, so it only it only uh, works with you know uh, port four four three outbound from your environment to Terraform Cloud. Okay, enough about enough about agents. Let's uh, now focus on getting our variables ready, right? So we can configure variables, and here you have two types of variables: Terraform variables and environment variables. Now we can add a variable from here, and here we would add our uh, AWS credentials, so you can type in your AWS credentials. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use something called variable sets. And this allows me to create a global uh, sort of variables that can be imported and used in multiple um, in multiple workspaces. And I already have that here. You can see AWS access key ID and secret access key. Uh, you can see that the values are sensitive, so I, I can't make changes here. And the category is environment. It's an environment variable, not a Terraform variable. If I edit the variable, 
um, let's see here. Oh, I can't edit the variable because it's uh, it's in the variable set. I'll show you how to do that when we get to variable sets. But you can do the same here. And if you want this or decide this is a sensitive variable, just make sure that you click sensitive here. Um, and whether it's a Terraform variable or environment variable. So that's how you do it inside of a workspace. Uh, but again, like I said, I'm defining this in my uh, as a variable set um, here. Now, if you want to see the variable sets, you can get you have to get out of workspaces and go to settings and then go to variable sets. And from here, you can create a new variable set, give it a name, uh, apply to particular projects or particular workspaces and then you add the variable uh, right here okay so similar to adding a normal variable but again this will be a variable set that is global that we can use it for uh, multiple workspaces so here's my aws uh, variable set uh, i can edit here and uh, as you can see i cannot see it right once you put it in it's encrypted at rest you can't see your variables all right, so our workspace is pretty much ready. Uh, next, I want to show you the registry. This is where we need to put our module, which will allow us to provision EKS. So to do that, go to the modules and let's go ahead and publish a new module. And once again, everything is tied to version control. So I need to publish a module from my GitHub. And notice the, the schema here for the module has to have this naming convention. You've got to be Terraform dash provider that we're going to use and then give it a name. In my case, it's terraform-aws-eks. So we'll choose that, publish the module, and wait for the module to get published. One key thing is that you need to have tags in your module for the module to work. Because if you don't have any tags, then um, Terraform Cloud doesn't know what kind of versions that you have for this module. So it needs to um, it needs to have tags. You need to be able to publish tags in your uh, GitHub or GitLab repo to uh, to grab that. You can see here the version that we're running is 0 .0 0.0.7, which is the latest. Um, you can uh, you can see the different versions. Uh, let's see here. It's still publishing in progress, so you just gotta wait a little bit. Uh, while that while that waits or while we wait. We can see our inputs, so you can see the different inputs that are coming in to our uh, to our module. Uh, the outputs that we expect out of the module, any dependencies, you can see we're depending on this public uh, EKS module, you have VPC, RSA, EBS, CSI, and, uh, and so on. And resources will show up here as well. Okay. All right. Let's get this, give this a refresh here. There we go. So if you click change here, you can go to a previous version of the module. And this is super important because you may have users that are asking for new features for your module, but you also have other users using your module. So you want to make sure that they, these users are pinning a particular module version in case there are any breaking changes as you add more features to the module. The module usage, you grab this uh, snippet of code here, and now you can use this in your Terraform code. Now, we are going to go back to our workspace and our project here and our workspace, and we're going to trigger a new run. Okay, so let's run a plan, start the run, and this, remember, is tied to our version control system, and it's tied to our repo. So it's going to go ahead and plan uh, for us. Now, in the meantime, I've got my uh, my repo here. This is where I have my uh, my Terraform code, and you can see in main.tf I've got my module EKS that I'm calling from the private module registry in Terraform Cloud, and I'm specifying the different. Let's make this look a little nicer. I'm specifying the different variables that I expect to pass to the module. So region is US East 1. The cluster version for Kubernetes is 127. Uh, I gave it a name. And also the instance types that I want to provision are, um, it could be a list of multiple values, but I'm just using T2 small. The VP CIDR block that I'm going to use. Uh, the cluster minimum size is 1. Desired size is 2. And maximum 3. So we're going to use 
that for the nodes in our Kubernetes cluster. And uh, our variables, you can see here, these are all our variables. I have a defaults for everything. If you want to override these defaults, you can specify that as Terraform variables in the workspace variables tab that I showed you before. So you can change any of these variables there. And then finally, these are my outputs that will come out from the, um, after we've finished the plan here and the apply. All right, so it looks like we have finished planning. Terraform Cloud planned. Uh, it seems like we have 52 uh, resources to add. Let's make this a bit bigger. 52 resources to add, as you can see here. Um, these are all the resources that Terraform is going to provision. And outputs will show up once they are available. I can see a couple that are available because we're specifying those via variables. Uh, so now we can confirm and apply. And we can say, okay, go ahead and let's apply. And this depends on RBAC. So you might have a different role for a developer and maybe the person who uh, confirms and applies Terraform is a, a team lead, for example, or somebody in a different team. So you don't want to have uh, the same person like I'm doing here, planning and applying at the same time. So that's some of the benefits of having something like Terraform Cloud with an RBAC feature, a role-based access control that is, that allows you to, um, to work with different teams and to collaborate in a secure fashion. All right, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once this is complete. All right, looks like our apply has finished successfully. And if you scroll down to the end, you can see our output, uh, cluster endpoint, cluster name, cluster security group ID and region. And really all we need is the cluster name and region and uh, and we're good to go to access our cluster. So let's go back here in Visual Studio Code and I give you the instruction here. Uh, it's an AWS command, AWS EKS, and you give it the region uh, flag. Uh, that's the output from the region variable and, up, and also the cluster name uh, as well. So basically since I already named this in my Terraform variables, I can just copy this particular uh, command here and uh, and go ahead and paste that in my uh, window here so I can go ahead and do that and there we go we've updated our context now let's make this a little bit bigger I can go ahead and run uh, kubectl uh, let's see you get nodes I can see that I have my two nodes here running version 127.1 of, uh, of uh, Kubernetes. And I can check my, my context, of course. This is the context for the cluster that I'm in. I can also run uh, kubeNS to check my namespaces. So I'm in the default namespace. And I can run this command. It's an alias to basically show me all my uh, resources in all namespaces, right? So I can see all my kube system pods right here. Uh, Core DNS is running. The CSI controller is running. Kube proxy. Um, I can see my my uh, services. Kube DNS Kubernetes services, right? And then I got a few daemon sets, uh, and uh, and then uh, my deployments here: the Core DNS and CSI controller and uh, replica sets, of course. So it's a, it's an EKS cluster that's ready to be used uh, by us here, and it's all been done through Terraform. So uh, if we go back and just take another look here at, um, at uh, our run, we can actually go back and look at the overview, and uh, you'll see the outputs will show up here, as I showed you before. So if anybody comes into this workspace, you don't have to go into the last uh, Terraform apply. They can just go to the outputs and take a look at the output variables. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the states. So if you go under states here, you see the different states. And the last state file is right here. Uh, you can expand it and you can download it. And you can see all the resources that have showed up in the state. Of course, there's a, a lot of them. So if we go back and just collapse that. 
And you can see the changes in this version. So you can see the changes in this version versus a previous version of the state file. So it's pretty handy to be able to see that and look at that. All right, well, you know, that's uh, that's basically how we deployed it. But, you know, as I mentioned before, we have webhooks in here. So if you see, I made a, a slight change here uh, just to, from a cosmetic perspective, I kind of ran Terraform format and you can see it's uh, adjusted the equal sign here to match everywhere else. So what I can do is now I can just commit this and say uh, ran Terraform format. What I'm trying to show you is that once I uh, push this into GitHub, what will happen is a webhook is going to fire automatically. I didn't have to set up anything other than just connect uh, my GitHub to uh, Terraform Cloud. And from here, you're going to see it's already planning for me, right? So if I take a look at the details, you see that that uh, webhook fired and Terraform Cloud is already planning a run, a Terraform plan for me. So uh, obviously I didn't make any changes, so nothing, um, nothing will, yeah, here you go. No changes, your infrastructure matches the configuration because it was just the formatting that, uh, that I changed. So nothing will uh, run here. So you can see once this is done, there'll be nothing to apply, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of to show you how you can take a kind of a GitOps approach as you're running with Terraform Cloud. Um, so apply will not run, as you can see, because nothing has changed in your configuration. And uh, that's pretty much it. I hope uh, this has been informative. You got to understand a little bit more about Terraform Cloud and how to use it and some of the benefits. Uh, keep reading the blog post here and you'll uh, kind of get a deeper understanding as well. Thank you and I will see you in another video.